Ivy League. In today's video we'll learn about Ivy League. Going through the sections. Abstract, Members, History, Academics, Culture, Student Demographics, Competition and Athletics, Championships, Other Ivies, External Links, Abstract. The Ivy League is an American collegiate athletic conference comprising eight private research universities in the northeastern United States. The term Ivy League is typically used beyond the sports context to refer to the eight schools as a group of elite colleges with connotations of academic excellence, selectivity in admissions, and social elitism. Its members are Brown University, Columbia University, Cornell University, Dartmouth College, Harvard University, the University of Pennsylvania, Princeton University, and Yale University. While the term was in use as early as 1933, it became official only after the formation of the NCAA Division I Athletic Conference in 1954. All of the Ivies, members of the Ivy League, except Cornell were founded during the colonial period, they thus account for seven of the nine colonial colleges chartered before the American Revolution. The other two colonial colleges, Rutgers University and the College of William and Mary, became public institutions instead. Ivy League schools are viewed as some of the most prestigious universities in the world. All eight universities place in the top 17 of the 2020 U.S. News & World Report National Universities Ranking, including four Ivies in the top five. U.S. News has named a member of the Ivy League as the best national university every year since 2001, as of 2020, Princeton 11 times, Harvard twice, and the two schools tied for first five times. In the 2020 U.S. News & World Report Best Global University Ranking, three Ivies rank in the top 10 internationally. Harvard 1st, Columbia 7th, and Princeton 8th. Undergraduate enrollments range from about 4,500 to about 15,000, larger than most liberal arts colleges and smaller than most state universities. Total enrollment, which includes graduate students, ranges from approximately 6,600 at Dartmouth to over 20,000 at Columbia, Cornell, Harvard and Pennsylvania Ivy League financial endowments range from Brown's $4.7 billion to Harvard's $41.9 billion, the largest financial endowment of any academic institution in the world. The Ivy League is similar to other groups of universities in other nations such as Russell Group in the United Kingdom, the C9 League in China, and the Imperial Universities in Japan. This project compresses information gathered from Wikipedia in video format. Why should I watch it? Studies prove that reading while listening improves comprehension, increases speed as well as expands vocabulary and enhances fluency. Provide your feedback on the comments section. Support the channel by subscribing and liking the video. Thanks, members. Ivy League universities have some of the largest university financial endowments in the world, allowing the universities to provide abundant resources for their academic programs, financial aid, and research endeavors. As of 2018, Harvard University had an endowment of $38.3 billion, the largest of any educational institution. Each university attracts millions of dollars in annual research funding from both the federal government and private sources. History Planting the ivy was a customary class day ceremony at many colleges in the 1800s. In 1893, an alumnus told the Harvard Crimson, in 1850, Class Day was placed upon the university calendar, the custom of planting the ivy, while the ivy oration was delivered, arose about this time. At Penn, graduating seniors started the custom of planting ivy at a university building each spring in 1873 and that practice was formally designated as Ivy Day in 1874. Ivy planting ceremonies are reported for Yale, Simmons, Bryn Mawr and many others. Princeton's Ivy Club was founded in 1879. The first usage of Ivy in reference to a group of colleges is from sports writer Stanley Woodward, 18,951,965. A proportion of our Eastern Ivy colleges are meeting little fellows another Saturday before plunging into the strife and the turmoil. The first known instance of the term Ivy League being used appeared in the Christian Science Monitor on February 7, 1935. Several sports writers and other journalists used the term shortly later to refer to the older colleges, those along the northeastern seaboard of the United States, chiefly the nine institutions with origins dating from the colonial era, together with the United States Military Academy, West Point, the United States Naval Academy, and a few others. 
These schools were known for their long-standing traditions in intercollegiate athletics, often being the first schools to participate in such activities. However, at this time, none of these institutions made efforts to form an athletic league. A common folk etymology attributes the name to the Roman numeral for four, four, asserting that there was such a sports league originally with four members. The Morris Dictionary of Word and Phrase Origins helped to perpetuate this belief. The supposed four league was formed over a century ago and consisted of Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and a fourth school that varies depending on who is telling the story. However, it is clear that Harvard, Princeton, Yale and Columbia met on November 23, 1876, at the so-called Massasoit Convention to decide on uniform rules for the emerging game of American football, which rapidly spread. Seven out of the eight Ivy League schools were founded before the American Revolution. Cornell was founded just after the American Civil War. These seven were the primary colleges in the northern and middle colonies, and their early faculties and founding boards were largely drawn from other Ivy League institutions. There were also some British graduates from the University of Cambridge, the University of Oxford, the University of St. Andrews, the University of Edinburgh, and elsewhere on their boards. Similarly, the founder of the College of William and Mary, in 1693, was a British graduate of the University of Aberdeen and the University of Edinburgh. Cornell provided Stanford University with its first president. The influence of these institutions on the founding of other colleges and universities is notable. This included the Southern Public College movement which blossomed in the decades surrounding the turn of the 19th century when Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina and Virginia established what became the flagship universities for each of these states. In 1801, a majority of the first board of trustees for what became the University of South Carolina were Princeton alumni. They appointed Jonathan Maxey, a Brown graduate, as the university's first president. Thomas Cooper, an Oxford alumnus and University of Pennsylvania faculty member, became the second president of the South Carolina College. The founders of the University of California, Berkeley came from Yale, hence the school colors of University of California at Berkeley are Yale blue and California gold. Some of the Ivy League schools have identifiable Protestant roots, while others were founded as non-sectarian schools. King's College was founded at the behest of King George II of Great Britain and the Church of England, but renamed Columbia College following the American Revolution. In the early 19th century, the specific purpose of training Calvinist ministers was handed off to theological seminaries, but a denominational tone and such relics as compulsory chapel often lasted well into the 20th century. Penn and Brown were officially founded as non-sectarian schools. Brown's charter promised no religious tests and full liberty of conscience, but placed control in the hands of a board of 22 Baptists, 5 Quakers, 4 Congregationalists, and 5 Episcopalians. Cornell has been strongly non-sectarian from its founding. Ivy League is sometimes used as a way of referring to an elite class, even though institutions such as Cornell University were among the first in the United States to reject racial and gender discrimination in their admissions policies. This dates back to at least 1935. Novels and memoirs attest this sense, as a social elite, to some degree independent of the actual schools. After the Second World War, the present Ivy League institutions slowly widened their selection of their students. They had always had distinguished faculties, some of the first Americans with doctorates had taught for them, but they now decided that they could not both be world-class research institutions and be competitive in the highest ranks of American college sport. In addition, the schools experienced the scandals of any other big-time football programs, although more quietly. The first formal athletic league involving eventual Ivy League schools was created in 1870 with the formation of the Rowing Association of American Colleges. The RIC hosted a de facto national championship in rowing during the period 18,701,894. In 1895, Cornell, Columbia, and Penn founded the Intercollegiate Rowing Association, which remains the oldest collegiate athletic organizing body in the U.S. To this day, the IRA Championship Regatta determines the national champion in rowing in all of the I. Vies are regularly invited to compete. A basketball league was later created in 1902 when Columbia, Cornell, Harvard, Yale, and Princeton formed the Eastern Intercollegiate Basketball League, they were later joined by Penn and Dartmouth. In 1906, the organization that eventually became the National Collegiate Athletic Association was formed, primarily to formalize rules for the emerging sport of football. 
But of the 39 original member colleges in the NCAA, only two of them, Dartmouth and Penn, later became Ivies. In February 1903, intercollegiate wrestling began when Yale accepted a challenge from Columbia, published in the Yale News. The dual meet took place prior to a basketball game hosted by Columbia and resulted in a tie. Two years later, Penn and Princeton also added wrestling teams, leading to the formation of the student-run Intercollegiate Wrestling Association, now the Eastern Intercollegiate Wrestling Association, EIWE, the first and oldest collegiate wrestling league in the U.S. In 1930, Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, Penn, Princeton and Yale formed the Eastern Intercollegiate Baseball League, they were later joined by Harvard, Brown, Army, and Navy. Before the formal establishment of the Ivy League, there was an unwritten and unspoken agreement among certain Eastern colleges on athletic relations. The earliest reference to the Ivy Colleges came in 1933, when Stanley Woodward of the New York Herald Tribune used it to refer to the eight current members plus Army. In 1935, the Associated Press reported on an example of collaboration between the schools. The athletic authorities of the so-called Ivy League are considering drastic measures to curb the increasing tendency toward riotous attacks on goalposts and other encroachments by spectators on playing fields. Despite such collaboration, the universities did not seem to consider the formation of the league as imminent. Romain Berry, Cornell's manager of athletics, reported the situation in January 1936 as follows. I can say with certainty that in the last five years and markedly in the last three months there has been a strong drift among the eight or ten universities of the East which see a good deal of one another in sport toward a closer bond of confidence and cooperation and toward the formation of a common front against the threat of a breakdown in the ideals of amateur sport and the interests of supposed expediency. Please do not regard that statement as implying the organization of an Eastern Conference or even a poetic Ivy League. That sort of thing does not seem to be in the cards at the moment. Within a year of this statement and having held month long discussions about the proposal, on December 3, 1936, the idea of the formation of an Ivy League gained enough traction among the undergraduate bodies of the universities that the Columbia Daily Spectator, the Cornell Daily Sun, the Dartmouth, the Harvard Crimson, the Daily Pennsylvanian, the Daily Princetonian, and the Yale Daily News would simultaneously run an editorial entitled Now is the Time encouraging the seven universities to form the league in an effort to preserve the ideals of athletics. Part of the editorial read as follows. The Ivy League exists already in the minds of a good many of those connected with football, and we fail to see why the seven schools concerned should be satisfied to let it exist as a purely nebulous entity where there are so many practical benefits which would be possible under definite organized association. The seven colleges involved fall naturally together by reason of their common interests and similar general standards and by dint of their established national reputation they are in a particularly advantageous position to assume leadership for the preservation of the ideals of intercollegiate athletics. The Ivies have been competing in sports as long as intercollegiate sports have existed in the United States. Rowing teams from Harvard and Yale met in the first sporting event held between students of two U.S. colleges on Lake Winnipesaukee, New Hampshire on August 3, 1852. Harvard's team, the Oneida, won the race and was presented with trophy black walnut oars from then-presidential nominee General Franklin Pierce. The proposal did not succeed in January 11, 1937. The athletic authorities at the schools rejected the possibility of a heptagonal league in football such as these institutions maintain in basketball, baseball and track. However, they noted that the league has such promising possibilities that it may not be dismissed and must be the subject of further consideration. In 1945 the presidents of the eight schools signed the first Ivy Group Agreement, which set academic, financial, and athletic standards for the football teams. The principles established reiterated those put forward in the Harvard-Yale-Princeton Presidents Agreement of 1916. The Ivy Group Agreement established the core tenet that an applicant's ability to play on a team would not influence admissions decisions. The members of the group reaffirm their prohibition of athletic scholarships. Athletes shall be admitted as students and awarded financial aid only on the basis of the same academic standards and economic need as are applied to all other students. In 1954, the presidents extended the Ivy Group Agreement to all intercollegiate sports effective with the 195,556 basketball season. This is generally reckoned as the formal formation of the Ivy League. As part of the transition, Brown, the only Ivy that had not joined the Ibel, did so for the 195,455 season. A year later, the Ivy League absorbed the Ibel.
the Ivy League claims the Eyeball's history is its own. Through the Eyeball, it is the oldest basketball conference in Division I. As late as the 1960s many of the Ivy League University's undergraduate programs remained open only to men, with Cornell the only one to have been co-educational from its founding, 1865, and Columbia being the last, 1983, T.O. become co-educational. Before they became co-educational, many of the Ivy schools maintained extensive social ties with nearby Seven Sisters Women's Colleges, including weekend visits, dances and parties inviting Ivy and Seven Sisters students to mingle. This was the case not only at Barnard College and Radcliffe College, which are adjacent to Columbia and Harvard, but at more distant institutions as well. The movie Animal House includes a satiric version of the formerly common visits by Dartmouth men to Massachusetts to meet Smith and Mount Holyoke women a drive of more than two hours. As noted by Irene Harworth, Mindy Malini, and Elizabeth Debra, the Seven Sisters was the name given to Barnard, Smith, Mount Holyoke, Vassar, Bryn Mawr, Wellesley, and Radcliffe, because of their parallel to the Ivy League men's colleges. In 1982 the Ivy League considered adding two members, with Army, Navy, and Northwestern as the most likely candidates, if it had done so the league could probably have avoided being moved into the recently created Division 1 AA, now Division 1 FCS, for football. In 1983, following the admission of women to Columbia College, Columbia University and Barnard College entered into an athletic consortium agreement by which students from both schools compete together on Columbia University women's athletic teams, which replaced the women's teams previously sponsored by Barnard. When Army and Navy departed the Eastern Intercollegiate Baseball League in 1992, nearly all intercollegiate competition involving the eight schools became united under the Ivy League banner. The two major exceptions are wrestling, with the Ivies that sponsor wrestling all except Dartmouth and Yale members of the AON Hockey, with the Ivies that sponsor hockey all except Penn and Columbia members of ECAC Hockey. Academics The Ivy League schools are highly selective with their acceptance rates being approximately 10% or less at all of the universities. Admitted students come from around the world, although students from the northeastern United States make up a significant proportion of students. In 2018, seven of the eight Ivy League schools reported record high application numbers, seven also reported record low acceptance rates. There have been arguments that Ivy League schools discriminate against Asian candidates. For example, in August 2020, the U.S. Justice Department argued that Yale University discriminated against Asian candidates on the basis of their race, a charge the university denied. Harvard was subject to a similar challenge in 2019 from an Asian American student group, with regard to which a federal judge found Harvard to be in compliance with constitutional requirements. The student group has since appealed that decision, and the appeal is still pending as of August 2020. Members of the league have been highly ranked by various university rankings. All of the Ivy League schools are consistently ranked within the top 20 national universities by the U.S. News & World Report Best Colleges Ranking. The Wall Street Journal rankings place all eight of the universities within the top 15 in the country. Further, Ivy League members have produced many Nobel laureates, winners of the Nobel Prize and the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. Collaboration between the member schools is illustrated by the student-led Ivy Council that meets in the fall and spring of each year with representatives from every Ivy League school. The governing body of the Ivy League is the Council of Ivy Group Presidents, composed of each university president. During meetings, the presidents discuss common procedures and initiatives for their universities. The universities collaborate academically through the Ivy Plus Exchange Scholar Program, which allows students to cross-register at one of the Ivies or another eligible school such as the University of California at Berkeley, the University of Chicago the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Stanford University. Culture Different fashion trends and styles have emerged from Ivy League campuses over time, and fashion trends such as Ivy League and Preppy are styles often associated with the Ivy League and its culture. Ivy League style is a style of men's dress, popular during the late 1950s, believed to have originated on Ivy League campuses. The clothing stores J. Press and Brooks Brothers represent perhaps the quintessential Ivy League dress manner. The Ivy League style is said to be the predecessor to the preppy style of dress. Preppy fashion started around 1912 to the late 1940s and 1950s as the Ivy League style of dress. J. Press represents the quintessential preppy clothing brand, 
stemming from the collegiate traditions that shaped the preppy subculture. In the mid-20th century J. Press and Brooks Brothers, both being pioneers in preppy fashion, had stores on Ivy League school campuses, including Harvard, Princeton, and Yale. Some typical preppy styles also reflect traditional upper-class New England leisure activities, such as equestrian, sailing or yachting, hunting, fencing, rowing, lacrosse, tennis, golf, and rugby. Longtime New England outdoor outfitters, such as L.L. Bean, became part of conventional preppy style. This can be seen in sports stripes and colors, equestrian clothing, plaid shirts, field jackets and nautical-themed accessories. Vacationing in Palm Beach, Florida, long popular with the East Coast upper class, led to the emergence of bright color combinations in leisure wear seen in some brands such as Lily Pulitzer. By the 1980s, other brands such as Lacoste, Isod and Dooney and Burke became associated with preppy style. Today, these styles continue to be popular on Ivy League campuses, throughout the U.S., and abroad, and are oftentimes labeled as classic American style or traditional American style. The Ivy League is often associated with the upper-class white Anglo-Saxon Protestant community of the Northeast, old money, or more generally, the American upper-middle and upper-classes. Although most Ivy League students come from upper-middle and upper-class families, the student body has become increasingly more economically and ethnically diverse. The universities provide significant financial aid to help increase the enrollment of lower-income and middle-class students. Several reports suggest, however, that the proportion of students from less affluent families remains low. Phrases such as Ivy League snobbery are ubiquitous in nonfiction and fiction writing of the early and mid-20th century. A Louis Auchincloss character dreads the aridity of snobbery which he knew infected the Ivy League colleges. A business writer, warning in 2001 against discriminatory hiring, presented a cautionary example of an attitude to avoid, the bracketed phrase is his. We Ivy Leaguers know that an Ivy League degree is a mark of the kind of person who is likely to succeed in this organization. The phrase Ivy League historically has been perk. I've disconnected not only with academic excellence but also with social elitism. In 1936, sports writer John Kieran noted that student editors at Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Cornell, Columbia, Dartmouth, and Penn were advocating the formation of an athletic association. In urging them to consider Army and Navy and Georgetown and Fordham and Syracuse and Brown and Pitt as candidates for membership, he exhorted. It would be well for the proponents of the Ivy League to make it clear, to themselves especially, that the proposed group would be inclusive but not exclusive as this term is used with a slight uptilting of the tip of the nose. Aspects of Ivy stereotyping were illustrated during the 1988 presidential election, when George H. W. Bush, Yale 48, derided Michael Dukakis, graduate of Harvard Law School, for having foreign policy views born in Harvard Yard's boutique. New York Times columnist Maureen Dowd asked wasn't this a case of the pot calling the kettle elite? Bush explained, however, that, unlike Harvard, Yale's reputation was so diffuse, there isn't a symbol, I don't think, in the Yale situation, any symbolism in it, Harvard boutique to me has the connotation of liberalism and elitism and said Harvard in his remark was intended to represent a philosophical enclave and not a statement about class. Columnist Russell Baker opined that voters inclined to loathe and fear elite Ivy League schools rarely make fine distinctions between Yale and Harvard. All they know is that both are full of rich, fancy, stuck-up and possibly dangerous intellectuals who never sit down to supper in their undershirt no matter how hot the weather gets. Still, the last five presidents have all attended Ivy League schools for at least part of their education George H. W. Bush, Yale undergrad, Bill Clinton, Yale Law School, George W. Bush. Yale undergrad, Harvard Business School, Barack Obama, Columbia undergrad, Harvard Law School, and Donald Trump, Penn undergrad. Of the 44 men who have served as President of the United States, 16 have graduated from an Ivy League university. Of them, 8 have degrees from Harvard, 5 from Yale, 3 from Columbia, 2 from Princeton and 1 from Pennsylvania. 12 presidents have earned Ivy undergraduate degrees. Four of these were transfer students, Woodrow Wilson transferred from Davidson College, Barack Obama transferred from Occidental College, Donald Trump transferred from Fordham University, and John F. Kennedy transferred from Princeton to Harvard. John Adams was the first president to graduate from college, graduating from Harvard in 1755. Student Demographics Students of the Ivy League largely hail from the Northeast, largely from the New York City, Boston, and Philadelphia areas. 
As all eight Ivy League universities are within the Northeast, it is no surprise that most graduates end up working and residing in the Northeast after graduation. An unscientific survey of Harvard seniors from the class of 2013 found that 42% hailed from the Northeast and 55% overall were planning on working and residing in the Northeast. Boston and New York City are traditionally where many Ivy League graduates end up living. Students of the Ivy League, both graduate and undergraduate, come primarily from upper-middle and upper-class families. In recent years, however, the universities have looked towards increasing socioeconomic and class diversity by providing greater financial aid packages to applicants from lower, working, and lower middle-class American families. In 2013, 46% of Harvard undergraduate students came from families in the top 3.8% of all American households, i.e., over $200,000 annual income. In 2012, the bottom 25% of the American income distribution accounted for only 34% of students at Brown a figure that had remained unchanged since 1992. In 2014, 69% of incoming freshman students at Yale College came from families with annual incomes of over $120,000, putting most Yale College students in the upper middle and or upper class. In the 20,112,012 academic year, students qualifying for Pell Grants, federally funded scholarships on the basis of need, comprised 20% at Harvard, 18% at Cornell. 17% at Penn, 16% at Columbia, 15% at Dartmouth and Brown, 14% at Yale, and 12% at Princeton. Nationally, 35% of American university students qualify for a Pell Grant. Competition in Athletics Ivy champions are recognized in 16 men's and 16 women's sports. In some sports, Ivy teams actually compete as members of another league the Ivy Championship being decided by isolating the members' records in play against each other. For example, the six league members who participate in ice hockey do so as members of ECAC hockey, but an Ivy champion is extrapolated each year. In one sport, rowing, the Ivies recognize team champions for each sex in both heavyweight and lightweight divisions. While the Intercollegiate Rowing Association governs all four sex and bodyweight-based divisions of rowing, the only one that is sanctioned by the NCAA is women's heavyweight. The Ivy League was the last Division I basketball conference to institute a conference postseason tournament. The first tournaments for men and women were held at the end of the 201,617 season. The tournaments only award the Ivy League automatic bids for the NCAA Division I men's and women's basketball tournaments. The official conference championships continued to be awarded based solely on regular season results. Before the 201,617 season, the automatic bids were based solely on regular season record, with a one-game playoff held to determine the automatic bid. The Ivy League is one of only two Division I conferences which award their official basketball championships solely on regular season results, the other is the Southeastern Conference. Since its inception, an Ivy League school has yet to win either the men's or women's Division I NCAA basketball tournament. On average, each Ivy school has more than 35 varsity teams. All eight are in the top 20 for number of sports offered for both men and women among Division I schools. Unlike most Division I athletic conferences, the Ivy League prohibits the granting of athletic scholarships. All scholarships awarded are need-based, financial aid. In addition, the Ivies have a rigid policy against redshirting, even for medical reasons, an athlete loses a year of eligibility for every year enrolled at an Ivy institution. Additionally, the Ivies prohibit graduate students from participating in intercollegiate athletics, even if they have remaining athletic eligibility. Ivy League teams' non-league games are often against the members of the Patriot League, which have similar academic standards and athletic scholarship policies, although unlike the Ivies, the Patriot League allows both redshirting and play by eligible graduate students. In the time before recruiting for college sports became dominated by those offering athletic scholarships and lowered academic standards for athletes, the Ivy League was successful in many sports relative to other universities in the country. In particular, Princeton 126 recognized national championships in college football, last in 1935, and Yale 118, last in 1927. Both of these totals are considerably higher than those of other historically strong programs such as Alabama, which has won 15, Notre Dame, which claims 11 but is credited by many sources with 13, and USC, which has won 11. Yale, whose coach Walter Camp was the father of American football, 
held onto its place as the all-time wins leader in college football throughout the entire 20th century, but was finally passed by Michigan on November 10, 2001. Harvard, Yale, Princeton and Penn each have over a dozen former scholar-athletes enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame. Currently Dartmouth holds the record for most Ivy League football titles, with 18, followed closely by Harvard and Penn, each with 17 titles. In addition, the Ivy League has produced Super Bowl winners Kevin Booth, Cornell, two-time pro bowler Zach Dossey, Brown, Sean Morey, Brown, all-pro selection Matt Burke, Harvard, Calvin Hill, Yale, Derek Harmon, Cornell, and 1999 Mr. Irrelevant Jim Finn, Penn. Beginning with the 1982 football season, the Ivy League has competed in Division 1 AA, renamed FCS in 2006. The Ivy League teams are eligible for the FCS tournament held to determine the national champion, and the league champion is eligible for an automatic bid from the NCAA. However, since its inception in 1956, the Ivy League has not played any postseason games due to concerns about the extended December schedule's effects on academics. For this reason, any Ivy League team invited to the FCS playoffs turns down the bid. The Ivy League plays a strict 10-game schedule, compared to other FCS members' schedules of 11 regular season games, plus postseason, which expanded in 2013 to five rounds with 24 teams, with a bye week for the top eight teams. Football is the only sport in which the Ivy League declines to compete for a national title. In addition to varsity football, Penn, Princeton and Cornell also field teams in the 10-team collegiate sprint football league, in which all players must weigh 178 pounds or less. Penn and Princeton are the last remaining founding members of the league from its 1934 debut, and Cornell is the next oldest, joining in 1937. Yale and Columbia previously fielded teams in the league but no longer do so. The Ivy League is home to some of the oldest college rugby teams in the United States. Although these teams are not varsity sports, they compete annually in the Ivy Rugby Conference. The table above includes the number of team championships won from the beginning of official Ivy League competition, 195,657 academic year, through 201,617. Princeton and Harvard have on occasion won 10 or more Ivy League titles in a year, an achievement accomplished 10 times by Harvard and 24 times by Princeton, including a conference record 15 championships in 201,011. Only once has one of the other six schools earned more than eight titles in a single academic year. In the 38 academic years beginning 197,980, Princeton has averaged 10 championships per year, one-third of the conference total of 33 sponsored sports. In the 12 academic years beginning 200,506 Princeton has won champ championships in 31 different sports, all except wrestling and men's tennis. Rivalries run deep in the Ivy League. For instance, Princeton and Penn are long-standing men's basketball rivals, Puck Princeton t-shirts are worn by Quaker fans at games. In only 11 instances in the history of Ivy League basketball, and in only seven seasons since Yale's 1962 title, has neither Penn nor Princeton won at least a share of the Ivy League title in basketball, with Princeton champion or co-champion 26 times and Penn 25 times. Penn has won 21 outright, Princeton 19 outright. Princeton has been a co-champion seven times, sharing four of those titles with Penn. These four seasons represent the only times Penn has been co-champion. Harvard won its first title of either variety in 2011, losing a dramatic playoff game to Princeton for the NCAA tournament bid, then rebounded to win outright championships in 2012, 2013, and 2014. Harvard also won the 2013 Great Alaska Shootout defeating TCU to become the only Ivy League school to win the now-defunct tournament. Rivalries exist between other Ivy League teams in other sports, including Cornell and Harvard in hockey, Harvard and Princeton in swimming, and Harvard and Penn in football. Penn and Harvard have won 28 Ivy League football championships since 1982, Penn 16, Harvard 12. During that time Penn has had eight undefeated Ivy League football championships and Harvard has had six undefeated Ivy League football championships. In men's lacrosse, Cornell and Princeton are perennial rivals, and they are two of three Ivy League teams to have won the NCAA tournament. In 2009, the Big Red and Tigers met for their 70th game in the NCAA tournament. No team other than Harvard or Princeton has won the men's swimming conference title outright since 1972, although Yale, Columbia, and Cornell have shared the title with Harvard and Princeton during this time. 
Similarly, no program other than Princeton and Harvard has won the Women's Swimming Championship since Brown's 1999 title. Princeton or Cornell has won every indoor and outdoor track and field championship, both men's and women's, every year since 200,203, with one exception, Columbia women won the indoor championship in 2012. Harvard and Yale are football and crew rivals although the competition has become unbalanced. Harvard has won all but one of the last 15 football games and all but one of the last 13 crew races. The Yale-Princeton series is the nation's second longest by games played, exceeded only by the rivalry between Lehigh and Lafayette, which began later in 1884 but included two or three games in each of 17 early seasons. For the first three decades of the Yale-Princeton rivalry, the two played their season-ending game at a neutral site, usually New York City, and with one exception, 1890. Harvard, the winner of the game also won at least a share of the national championship that year, covering the period 1869 through 1903. This phenomenon of a finale contest at a neutral set e for the national title created a social occasion for the society elite of the metropolitan area akin to a Super Bowl in the era prior to the establishment of the NFL in 1920. These football games were also financially profitable for the two universities, so much that they began to play baseball games in New York City as well drawing record crowds for that sport also, largely from the same social demographic. In a period when the only professional team sports were fledgling baseball leagues, these high-profile early contests between Princeton and Yale played a role in popularizing spectator sports, demonstrating their financial potential and raising public awareness of Ivy universities at a time when few people attended college. Championships This list, which is current through July 1, 2015, Includes NCAA championships and women's AA championships. Excluded from this list are all other national championships earned outside the scope of NCAA competition, including football titles and retroactive Helms Foundation titles. Other Ivies The term Ivy is sometimes used to connote a positive comparison to or an association with the Ivy League, often along academic lines. The term has been used to describe the Little Ivies, a grouping of small liberal arts colleges in the northeastern United States. Other common uses include the Public Ivies, the Hidden Ivies, and the Southern Ivies. The term Ivy Plus is sometimes used to refer to the ancient eight plus several other schools for purposes of alumni associations, university consortia, or endowment comparisons. In his book Untangling the Ivy League, Saul writes, the inclusion of non-Ivy League schools under this term is commonplace for some schools and extremely rare for others. Among these other schools, Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Stanford University are almost always included. The University of Chicago and Duke University are often included as well.